Okay, back with the daily games. Just trying to um, get back into the long play thinking. Get rid of the quick thinking stuff. All right, so we have got this. We would have played these probably before, so we just have to get our memory Rolex back as to where we're what we're planning so the kings moved up bishops attacked the rook rooks moved over to the side they're attacking the knight so in essence we've moved off of there we can look to maybe move the knight maybe out of the way now maybe here what was the idea i think the idea was for me to try and bring this rook here attacking this pawn to give them something to think about I think I wanted a little bit better space for the knight. So the rook could come here, but these awful bishops are going to be darting all over the place. There's also this as well, attacking their bishop. So thinking potentially could do that. They're looking to obviously double the rooks and hit the pawn here, which is going to give us a bit of a sting, but we do have the pawn pushing up onto the bishop. And if the bishop takes, rook takes, then we still have the pawn pushing up. It's just that this pawn is going to be unprotected. The knight will have to move. So I think attacking this pawn bishop here is probably the way to go. I don't see a problem with it. It looks like we're on the back foot, but really they have to try and find a way in themselves. We do have a pawn majority on this side here and we have a poor majority on this side as well plus three we are and that's just based on the pawns so maybe we just need to just do disturbances of their pieces where are we sending the bishop to if he doesn't want to it'll be going back back somewhere so i think we're going to attack i think that's we'll lock that in Okay, so the last move that we made was bringing the rook up, putting a check on the king. Knight's coming to defend. It's also attacking the pawn here. Rook's in the center of the board. It's not attacking anything at the moment. And our rook could come here looking to x-ray through to the king. Or we could just start pushing the pawn up and up. But what I think is going to happen is the rook is going to come and challenge our rook. So is there something to be said for bringing this rook here? It's not fast enough though really because their rook is going to get to this square. We come up, rook takes, rook takes. Still supporting the pawn. King's got a flight square so don't really need to worry too much about that. But it could peter out to be a draw. We're plus one at the moment. Bishop could attack the knight because we have an next way through. But the rook is already defending the knight. And then he could just double dose and attack here. But I think he'll probably just go and attack the rook. Bishop's got this space here attacking the king. So it gives them something to think about. I think he'll just move here onto a, <coughs> onto a white square. I think that gives them something to think about. Let's just bring the bishop here. Oh, in fact, hold on before we jump there. He could just simply just drop the pawn. And then we kind of would have wasted the bishop move. Yeah, I think we hang fire on that one. We could attack their rook. Because the bishop's supporting this square. So it's almost kind of almost forced to take. Because if he doesn't take... Or if he moves out of the way somewhere, then we'll have two pieces on the knight. That might be a little bit better. I think we're going to take here. Well, going to attack here. I'm locking that in. Let's give that a tick. 
Okay, what do we have here? Let's see. All right, so we've attacked the knight, the rook, sorry, with our knight. Looking to be a little bit flexible, causing a bit of trouble, attacking the other rook. But we have to be careful. We can come back because the pawn is protecting. And don't want to get it trapped. So if we do attack, he can simply just drop down here. We could look to just bolster it a bit. Attack, attack. Could hit the rook. But he does have two pieces on this pawn. Well, three pieces on this pawn. So that probably wouldn't go down too well. Could get the rook into the game a little bit. Behind the knight is the pawn. I'm plumping more for bringing the rook into the game before we start jumping around. I think I'm locking this one in. Just before we do that, let's have a look at the tail of the tape. Here, he's touching our pawn, so he could, in theory, just take the pawn off the board. So, if our rook's here, he takes, off, takes it off the board, we take. He's already got his rook supporting his rook. So, he can actually just take... And then if we take, he takes, and he's kind of on in the file, get the king here. Mm -hmm -hmm. Gets his knight mobilized, is it fast enough? No, because we'll take. Okay, something to think about there. I mean, I could always just come back and defend the pawn. I can't really take because he's got like a double whammy. So I could bring the king here. But then he just takes. Oops, and he just takes. Hmm, interesting. Bring the rook, he takes. Knight goes and attacks the rook. Rook stays on the file. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember your continuation. You know, you've got so many games on. So you, for me, I've got to just sit back and try and remember what it was that I saw. I know the knight was attacking the rook. There may have been a, another continuation after that that we had, which was like some sort of brilliant type maneuver. But taking, we can't take because the rook takes, takes. Bringing the knight across, it's not really attacking anything. Attack the rook first, doesn't make much difference, goes here. Farm in this square. Then dance around and grab a pawn, but we don't want to do that. Shall we just continue with the rook coming here? But he does end up being a gets the pawn back, doesn't he? That's where we're. Oh no, we're not even a pawn up on this game. Shame. Right, yeah. So he'll be end up being a pawn up if we let that go. So we don't have to keep the knight here. We can bring it back and protect. Then we can start shooting these pawns down, trying to get rid of the knight. But obviously we can take that if it does that. Hmm. <laughs> Which is the better move? Right, now let's look through the mantra. Simple. Direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. Probably the key word is remove, but we can't really remove because, as we said, that goes there. Strategy. Give them something to think about. But then they just drop. 
Can we give them something else to think about? Has the knight got an, another weird angle? Could come here and it's attacking this pawn and it's attacking this pawn. So it's a fork on the pawn. So we go up, he drops down. Mm -mm -mm. We drop here. Yeah, okay, I think that, that might be a good thing. Going here, he drops down. He might not drop down, he might attack the knight, but either way, I think he'll just stay on this file. So we can come here. I'm not seeing ghosts, Summer. Can come here attacking this and attacking this. So whilst we've, we're down here, he then takes the pawn with the pawn. We get back into the game with the knight, take the pawn. Do we? Take the pawn. Then his pawn maybe takes. So he's getting two pawns and we only get one pawn. So let's just uh, slow down with that one. Up, down, down, takes takes no oh, he still gets the pawn don't he ah, still gets up the pawn rook takes rook takes rook takes knight takes so we get the pawn back but they're owning the file with the rook so if we take there then he just comes down here and then he's challenging this pawn and we're kind of on the back foot. Rook comes across to defend. This knight's right at the back and that might be a saving grace. Okay, I think it's doable but I just you know because they're going to end up owning the file I'm not really a fan of that. So there's no capture because he could just take the knight off the board anyway with the rook. So we are plumping for this, I think. Let's go with it. Let's go with it. Let's see if we remember it when it comes back around again. Okay, so as you can see, I'm trying to take my time, trying to find the better moves. But you can never really tell what the opponent is going to do. Unless, of course, you've got like forced checks on key pieces and that sort of stuff. Okay, so the knight is wanting to put a check on their king here. But let's just have a look at what's going on. Alright, so the knight has moved up. We've moved the king because he had a check on us. We've taken the knight. So, obviously, if we take, the queen's going to be taken. So it gives us a bit of a moment because the knight is looking to come here with a check and get the fork on the king from the rook. And do we have any constant checks on their king? The knight can come here, put one check on, but then it can go. The king can go anywhere really, it can just drop here. Do we have any other checks? on a white square our queen's on a dark square yeah so it's just one momentary check if we take the queen takes the queen is then on the rook in the corner queen is on the rook in the corner knight's not in the best place one check drops safe as houses Queen can't even come here because of the bishop. Ooh, what is the continuation here? It looks like we're getting a bit of a squish, so we might have to just focus on there, there, and this pawn might be going, or we can move the king across just to protect the rook. 
it's on a dark square this pawn is looking like it's protecting but then the queen's just snapping pawns up here but it's not putting a check on the king so there's some severe damage heart of hearts just think there is something there that we can squish the king on but we just can't get in kings on a dark square queens on a dark square yeah one check is not going to be good enough is it but does it get the knight into the game coming further down no because we still want to take this knight off the board and we're still going to have to deal with the queen or do we have to take the knight i don't know let me see let me see check I'm assuming that they're not going to go here because then we do have a check on the king and we can harass it a bit, can't we? Or can we? Is it just one check and then he hides here? No, it is because then we'd be taking the bishop and putting checks on, so they've got to come here, haven't they? And it's just that bit there we can't squeeze here because it'll just take us off the board. There's got to be more magic than that. Check. Down. Well, they don't have a mate threat. That's the thing I'm thinking. They've got like a check and getting the rook off the board type thing. Whereas if we get our, if we got our queen to here and the knight is here and he's dropped here, Maybe not. The damn bishop is blocking that way, isn't it? Because I was thinking, oh, I'll get the queen here and then it's trapped, but it's not quite, is it? Mm. In fact, it could move here even as well. But I think moving there gives us the queen taking the pawn and putting a check on. Bishop can come in the way. I mean, we do have a smaller piece attacking the higher piece, which is the queen, but like we said, it's just going to get the rook off the board, win a tempo, because he can just easily move the queen back or move it here. And he's getting the knight for free, as, the rook for free as well. Hmm. What? This is in long play games. This is what this is what you do as a chess player. You you try to fit it in somehow and try and make it work for yourself. And this is where the errors make come in because you go, there must be something here. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take the risk anyway. I'm gonna go for it. And because you haven't followed it all the way through, then there isn't anything there. And the mystical, fictitious manoeuvres just fail and fall into insignificance. It's a check. Ideal position is to get the queen here and to get it there. But the bishop is blocking. So if the bishop is blocking, even if we pushed here, he could just do a double whammy, but he's not going to do that. He'll go for this anyway. So we have no time or space. I mean, this isn't, this is nice, but we can't get to it. And just moving the rook off the line, the bishop takes it. Pushing the pawn, try and make some space, but he still comes here and gets the check on the king. We move the king out of the way. He goes for the rook because that's what they want to do. We take the pawn. which gives us a bit of a balancer here to attack the king. That could be a way to go, you know, because they'll be so focused on coming here to get the rook. But what can they do if that, if it doesn't happen that way? So we go here, hit the pawn, it just takes. <laughs> so it just takes this pawn it's not supported by this pawn anyway, but we're trying to see if there's any, we can't get in the spaces. 
Jinx takes the knight now protecting this pawn, his pawn. Hmm. Yeah, it could go that way, couldn't it? Uh, and he does actually take. But I'm thinking they're going to be so hell bent on going for the fancy because they're going to win the tempo anyway. So we move the king out of the way. And then maybe they. No, no, they won't do that. Then they'll take the rook. And then we're saying. Is it even a push then to stop the king from jumping down? Oh, but then it's block, blocking the knight's passage. So taking. Assuming they'll take, but they might not take. And then if that pawn is out of the way, then we go with the check on the king. They're no longer coming here because queen is blocking that way. So it has to farm up and down. That's a bit risky because there's so many things they can do. They can just take the pawn. And negate this. So what's the positives behind that then? Okay, they take... Excuse me, queen is on the pawn. Okay, so if they take, then we just take the knight off the board. Yeah, queen comes here, is attacking our rook. And... Just not. Kingston says, yeah, checking the rook. Come here, attack the king. He can do this again, like we said. Queen is here. Pawn's no longer there. But this pawn is blocking. Knight is here. Queen is ready to put a check on our king. No point the knight coming there. Hmm. Yeah, that's just a bit of a spoiler if they do take, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> Up. I'm so fixated on this. I'm just trying to get some sort of disturbance, but it just. Uh, if they take. I mean, I suppose if it was a quick game, blitzy game or whatever, they would still go with this because they'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm getting the rook off the backboard no matter what. Move the king. Queen's not coming here. Yeah, they'll... I mean, they just focus on getting the rook off the board, wouldn't they? Although that does cause a bit of an issue. That does actually cause a bit of an issue, you know, because if they do get the rook off the board, then the queen can just come down here and get a mate. Because on the, my king will, will be here. Bishop puts a check on, we can push the pawn up. No, that's no worries. Take. I don't think I like that one. Take. Queen. Queen comes here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I bet you it's as simple as that, isn't it? You know. So a piece for a piece, and they're going to be two pawns up. <sighs> don't know if I like them apples. I'm not. Don't you? I don't know. Puts a check on, moves down, hit the pawn. He goes for the check. We move out of the way. It's like these intermittent moves. Hmm. Nothing is clear. The only things that are clear are taking, putting a check on the king. 
cats getting arty because we don't know which way they're going to blow. Human nature says they're coming here anyway. Boom, 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 boom. Bring the rook here. One, two, three. So in this game we've got we're up the exchange, so they're looking to get it back. Hmm. Take Queen takes. King here. Queen takes on yet another pawn. Queen takes the pawn is also on our rook. Knight puts the check on the king. King drops. That's too destructive, isn't it? That's too destructive. Yeah, we're giving them loads of pieces with that capture. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're capturing. But there's nothing we can do about that. Takes, takes. It's on two pieces. I, no, I don't. I'd rather give up the rook. But it's giving it up for free. That's the thing. If we move the rook, queen's going to be on the rook because the knight's just going to move, and plus he'll be up at minor, a minor piece. I shouldn't think like that really because it's we're up the exchange. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Could bring the queen here. It's not going to make any difference because the bishop's protecting that square. <laughs> ah, could grab a pawn. He comes here. We go here. So we grab a pawn, he comes here, we move here, and is there some, nope, and then he goes, I'm taking this, we then go, pop, put a check on the king. Or do we go there, because we're blocking the knight, aren't we? Put a check on the king, they can go back. They can go here, they can go here. I don't think they want to block the rook. So I think it's either this one. Probably again this one because we'll be taking here. So they drop here. So they drop here. If the queen is there. The knight is here. Knight can come back around and put a check on the king. The pawn can't take. It's not going to work like that. We're going to lose out somehow. I think there's some mate thing going on. I think we're going to take the pawn. I'm locking this one in because we're trying to at least get something on their king if we can. So I'm taking the pawn. We know that this is happening. Yeah, we know this is coming. We know we're going here. If they do take, they're kind of hopefully losing tempo. We can start maybe squishing the king. That is the plan. Stick in with it. I'm hoping I remember it. <laughs> Let's go here. Let's lock that in. Half an hour coming up already of the session. Let's see what we've got here. So that was a mammoth calculating session there on that particular one. But this is how, hopefully, fingers crossed, I, I can at least um, go into the tournament in um, in eight weeks' time. Um, a little bit more refreshed as to being able to take my time and focus on the more if, buts, maybes and 
and dig a little bit deeper into what potentially I can do and what the potentially the opponent can do. So I think eight weeks, definitely long enough period of time. It's not saying I'm going to win anything or anything. We have our target and we're hoping to try and achieve that target because we are in the major section. We've never been in the major section before under nine under 1950 and so the secret envelope is um, it shows you the details of the tournament but yeah um, it's a nice low target we've set for ourselves because we're being realistic we know how strong these players are and they don't necessarily play like how people play online so I think if I can just go in there with some type of calculation practice uh, to all it is is basically because none of these games are going to be the same as any games that I'm playing over the board. But it's the idea of sitting there and trying to calculate as best possible um, the if, buts and maybes. And hopefully utilising the mantra as the backdrop to the calculations to help inform my decisions and avoid devil finger moves. All right, so what's happened here? So we the queen's taken small small piece attacking the higher piece. The knight's gone back, and we've developed the knight. And they've developed their knight. So we're still in the opening stages, but key thing for me is those early moves have got to be crucial in terms of how you're wanting the game to play out and if there's any advantages. I mean, I was focused on pushing this from doing this knight maneuver here. Just again to see if we can open up the centre. Probably nine's out, nine times out of ten, they're not going to be interested in taking because they like the pawn structure here that they've got. So they are attacking our pawn. Our knight is defending at the minute. We could blast through just to open space up, but it's a bit of a disadvantage for us. We could go small potatoes and just push this pawn up. I do like this because it kind of gives them something to think about. I don't think they will take. If they do take, then it advances our knights up a little bit. Potential for attacking their knight. But not going too hefty. We'll see. I mean, it's almost inviting pressure onto our pawn. Because if they do take, then obviously... It's an open file that we've created for them as well. So you could go small old man chess and just do this sort of thing blocking down. That's kind of dangerous, I think, as well. I mean, it stops the knight from jumping in here. Knight's looking to eye this square up. We do have a knight here at the minute. But it's all really based on the opponent's reaction. So I think we're going to just try and Blast through the center, get some activity going. I'm locking that in. Okay. Right, I think this was one of the last ones which we played twice uh, yesterday. So we're going in and attacking. We're trying to make some space around the king because they've not castled. So we're just trying to give them something to think about. Keeping that pressure on. Attacking the bishop's got no protection on. And... Wanting to basically get rid of this knight so that it's not facing their queen because uh, it's got no protection on. There are elements of can't go here at this moment because the queen is protecting so the knight is coming back here. There are elements of being able to go here to open up a little bit but really I don't think that's going to work for us. We want to try and keep our pawn structure as straight as possible um, as we're going into the tournament. There may be occasions where doubling the pawns might be good, but I've got to just refrain myself from that. There's pluses and minuses to having the double pawns. It's a cat fight. So I'm going to take the bishop. I'm locking that in. I don't really see any problems with that. We've done that to get that reaction, so let's go. All right, and this is one we did twice yesterday as well. Let's have a look. 
So we brought the bishop back, they brought the queen into Axiom, and we decided, well, just bring this bishop here, just uh, protecting our pawn. Because odd, norm, normally I, I do the rook thing and then I try to get the bishop here, that type of stuff. But because our bishop's in front of the pawn, we're probably never going to get this pawn pushed up for a long time. So we may as well bring the bishop into the game. At least it's, it's acting like a pawn, but hey, it's doing something. So they've moved their knight around. So obviously they're looking to do some... I have a coming here... Maybe resting here, but maybe not. So I don't know. Is it coming this way to come here? We're attacking the knight. Not sure. Or is it just making space? But either way, it's going to, I think it'll end up on this one here. So it's going to be in front of our king, Gary. So it's almost like they're copying what we're doing. We've got pieces in front of our king, give, keeping company, but also. I mean, the bishop's not directly hitting the king. But, you know, we've got pieces in front of the king. What we're wanting to try and do is get the queen involved somehow. But it doesn't look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. And this knight is um, kind of stuck in the middle. But we don't want to overcrowd the situation. Just want to see what they're going to do when we do think the knight is coming here. And that might give us not major issues, but... This knight is probably attacking the bishop, so get ready to open up. Maybe open up this way. I always want to open up this way because of the rook. But we have to be mindful. They do have white squares, so we'd have to end up moving the king across. So what's our next move? Probably getting the queen off of the back like uh, I kind of mentioned uh, earlier. Got to be mindful the rooks will be facing off. Sit the queen here. It's very slow potatoes fall process at the minute. Let me see. Obviously, they want to get this bishop out. It's probably going to be x-raying through to our queen. So this is why it's not... It doesn't feel too good for us. It seems like the onus is on white here to charge forward and uh, take the battle to us. Hmm. Could move the queen, like we said, and if he does come there, then... We do have a bit of play to move the knight around, attacking their queen type stuff. Again, it does double the pawns if they do take. Okay, they've got three pieces on there. We've got two pieces on her. I think moving the queen up is not going to be a problem. I'm going to move the queen up. I'm locking that in. I think I've touched on that about six times during that. So I think that's the one to do. Excellent. Oh, 38 minutes. All right, okay. I'm gonna to dare to do a refresh. Last time it kind of locked me out of the system and I had to log back in again. I'm gonna refresh to see how many we've got left. 14, oh, they must be online. They must be online. Crikey. Wow. <laughs> oh, dear me. All right. So we'll check to see if we're doing any duplicates. And if we start doing duplicates, we we'll definitely just stop. Yep. Because we do have about, is it 40 odd or something? So it, it might just be that we're working our way down nice and steadily. But any duplicates, definitely just stop and um, we'll call it a day. What's happened in this one? Uh, so, I'm quite pleased I've not, I'm not getting into the mindset of rattling through, which is good, which shows that that day's training yesterday has actually helped already. So the knights come through. This is one where we're focusing on just keeping that pressure because the king is still at this moment in the firing line. And we brought the bishop back, keeping that pressure still. So now we're trying to maybe either double up on the bishop or double up on the pawn. I think probably doubling up on the bishop might help. But doubling up on the pawn might also help because we could take. So the bishop's moved out of the way, looking to attack our rook. 
and it's also potentially just bringing it here as well you know so if we do go for doubling then they can bring their rook down and they've got three pieces protecting we've got three pieces attacking elements of taking the rook yeah so we can take the rook his rook comes and takes so it's all in the file we simply bring the king across just to kind of stop the back ranker and then they can still come down again just to protect the pawn they are plus two and that must be the pawns yep one two three four five six seven one two three four five yeah so they're plus two on the pawns which is do we really want to be exchanging when they're plus two I think we probably need to just keep as much pressure on the pawn as we can it's going to come down and then this one's going to come around the back and it's going to go for the back rank threat so we we'll need to make space or move the king across yeah so the two pawns that they've got advantage they've got pawn majority on this side so i'm going to do this it looks like we're on to a bit of a bad situation here and they've grabbed an advantage of two pawns which is really quite good so we're probably not going to last too long too long in this game um, depending on what they do next i mean the simple things are just bringing the rook like we said so we're not going for the exchange so we'll just bring the rook here we'll lock that in all right and uh, let's see what we've got on this one on captures bishop x-ray through to the rook captures queen captures queen's put itself in the x-ray of the bishop that's kind of what i've seen so it's moved out of the way so the rook is supporting the rook we can take, he takes, go and attack, bishop attacks. What's the tail of the tape here? What well, looks like it's even. Yeah, it's even at the minute. So, okay. Knight's protected by the queen. White square bishop really wants to be in a bit more of a because really and truly it's got no protection on it. If the knight moves and they're getting that for free so takes got to check on the king takes attack the rook and this is where it could get funky so we attack the rook because the knight moves so that is it's not got to check on our queen knight moves because the queen's on there but then we can just take the rook off the board with a check on the king don't like the position look how i've got my double pawns here do like my double pawns but i've got to kind of really hang fire on these mm -hmm. smaller piece could hit the knight but where are we sending the knight to? I guess they'd probably go back here, wouldn't it? But then it's on the bishop. Simple is a simple does. Just feels like I'm going to end up going backwards. We do have an x-ray through, so the knight's not getting into any action at the minute. I'm locking in, taking the rook. All right, what do we got here? Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to dare to do a refresh. 13, yeah, well, okay. Yeah, that's right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
So if I write down the total, because I don't think I'm going to dare to do any more refreshes, because last time it went off. So 13, and then I'll do a countdown. Let's see. Okay, this one here, we're wanting to see whether or not we can get the rook and put a check on his king here. It looks like them. Yeah, they're going to... Yeah, they're circumventing it. Because if we go here... Then our rook can never go across and put a check on. Put the check. He either goes here or goes back. Yeah, I was trying to fashion. But they can see it. So I can't come here. Yeah, if I did that. Oh, if I, if I do that, then at least I've got some sort of support to put a check on the king. But I think they're going to see that, aren't they? And if I did do that, he does have his bishop and his little sly rook here waiting to jump in and take this pawn. Oops, excuse me. So we go up, then the king goes, ha ha ha, I've got you. Then moves back again. But then, if they do that, we hit them with the big gun. And it comes back again. On a dark square. And there ain't much going on there, then it's after that. Hit him there, and then we bring this rook up. So he can't move anywhere. Oh, that might be a bit funky, might it? Let's do... The, I think so, anyway. Yeah, let's do that. Bishop's covering... Th there might be some sort of sacrifice that's going to take place. Like, he just takes the bishop or something. Or the bishop just blasts down just to mess it all up. So let's do that. That seems like a half-decent plan. I'm locking that in. So we're down to 12. Okay, we're on 47 minutes, so this will probably take us an, uh, an hour and a half to go through. But I'm not flagging in terms of getting this tunnel vision of starting to do the games quickly and rushing through. So really, yesterday's exercise was a godsend because we're just coming out of playing loads of blitzy type games and bullet games and all that sort of stuff and it's really quite hard to get back into the groove of thinking long term long longer vision bigger strategies bigger plans etc uh, so i'm really thankful of yesterday's games and yeah feeling good because i even had to take a break yesterday didn't i because i was starting to move real quick i wanted to get it over and done with it, it was like why is it taking so long just do a quick calculation but I feel more relaxed and chilled. I'm enjoying this more. And I'm not saying I'm doing the perfect moves. No, don't get me wrong. Because uh, I can't think for the opponent. But it's a good exercise anyway. So let's have a look at where we've got to here. So the Queen's had enough. Moved back. We've castled. And our Queen is in a very odd position. Where it looks like it's probably got itself trapped. Okay, so what we're going to probably do is bring the bishop here, attacking their bishop. That's my initial thoughts. Because the queen is going to end up getting into trouble somehow with their bishop. The bishop doesn't have to take, but if the bishop does take, then at least we can take and we'll be on their queen. Their queen doesn't have to take, they can move anywhere. So I'm going to just bring the bishop into here. Because our queen can't just... Just in case you're wondering why you think it's trapped. Queen can't come here. It can't go there. It can't go there. And it can't go here. Yeah. It can't go here. And it can't go here. So if some funky business of the bishop, if we didn't have our situation, um, then it would be trapped. So maybe I'm worried too much about it. But um, it's because I've had, what is it? 
oh no, one key over the board game where I came out with my queen and I was playing a much higher rated player and I was winning. I was up in this corner. I was winning and it was like fantastic. And then I just left the queen there, started doing all my other moves and the opponent's body language started changing because I left my queen there and then I ended up getting it trapped. So I lost my queen in the game. These things stick in your mind. Sometimes you can't prevent it because you get carried away with your queen. But um, yeah, those that was a very hard pill to swallow. It was like, oh, you're such a high rated player as well. And even he said, oh, you know, you should have just moved that queen, shouldn't you? Because you, you were all over me. Those aggressive days of mine, never mind. So we're going to bring the bishop here. We're, we're attacking. I don't really see any other issues with that. Locking that in. Okay, 11. 11 more to go. What do we have here? Oh, yeah, we've got a nice sneaking little knight. I don't think this is any advantage. Yeah, see, even Steven. So, again, probably one of those that we said could probably peter out to be in a draw. So, they've moved the king out of the way. They're probably stopping the knight from coming here because that's where we said we were potentially going to go, you know, and uh, win a rook, if I remember correctly. So, we have to change the trajectory because now the pawn is going to be hitting the knight. We could hit their knight with our pawn, smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Only issue is the knight's just jumping here and it's attacking the pawn. So we could hit the knight again. And where's it going? Probably has to come back and get taken. Take, take, take. Yep. So push. Doesn't have to go that way. It could go here. But you'd think that they'd want to be a bit of an attacking thing so we'll, they'll attack we push on so it doesn't have to go anywhere now we, we're not going to go here it's not going to go there because it'll get taken i think that's what we do just thinking of the end game type thing this pawn won't have any protection on it once we start this ball rolling If this magic, I mean, can he come here? Hiding? Mm, not really. So, probably envisage the coming here. Then we take, king takes. So, the pawns are all over there. Can his king come down? I think we're um, plumping for this. Plumping for this. What Elfa Magic does the knight think it's got? I don't think it's got anything particular. That was the magic square for it. And it could always go back again. Well, it could actually. So it, it started here. So coming here would be a new position for it. But it's not really concrete. It's just basically bait in a pawn baits the pawn but then the knight comes here puts a check on the king king attacks knight comes back down it's a bit much it's a bit much but it's going to have to move at some point because this pawn is going to be hitting it so I suppose that's a nice touch you know if he doesn't do that we do have these we can come back here you know, we could even go here. Obviously not going to go there. But if we push this, then we don't have this. But I feel pushing onto the knights. Make them make a decision if they go here. I don't think that's too major. I'm going to lock this in. I'm only a bit worried about having this pawn here by itself coming into the end game is it going to cause me trouble really so if it comes to uh, we'll go here we 
goes there, and it goes there. King takes. So we're gonna need to support this pawn out. And he comes across with his rook. Okay, let's not worry about it. It looks like it can be defended. Let's hit the knight. Let's lock this in. 10 more to go. Oh, this is the super strong. Oh, I think I messed up my screen on the previous ones. Never mind. I didn't scroll far enough up. Yeah, this is the strong, the strong guy. We're not laying out much hope here. It's plus one at the minute. What did we do? So we decided to capture. And it looks like it's going for the exchange. So we could get that back. Just bring, I'm surprised. Hold on a minute. Am I losing out somewhere here? Let's go back. Yeah, so they're plus one already here. Right, yeah. And they've got the pawn structures coming down in the center. So we were definitely worried. We said, okay, the plan may be bring the knight here, get the knight up to attack the rook. That was all we could really see. Did think they were probably going to block down with the pawn. So they're plus one already. But they decided to push down. So we went capture. So we've got the pawn back briefly. Then they've captured. And somehow they're getting that pawn back, aren't they? I'm just thinking. Because they look like... Okay, we go here. We're attacking the rook and the bishop. Takes, excuse me, could potentially go for a queen exchange or not. Where is he getting this pawn back? It must be this or something. Don't want to overthink it, but um, it's very strange if I feel like I'm getting the pawn back. Queen coming here or something, putting a check on me. Queen coming here, attacking the knight, and having a good position on my. So we said the bishop potentially coming here, but that won't be happening. So I'm going to take the pawn. It's not to get the pawn back because I want to just get a good position on the board. And it looks like that capturing the pawn is the one. Or does he triple up? Ah, slow down a minute, slow down. So bam. He's not going to have time to triple up in this manoeuvre because we're attacking either the bishop or the rook. And nothing's taking. So do they just go, right, let's put a check on the king. Yeah, so I have to react to that. If I then take with the queen. And if he then exchanges... Then we're owning the file. And then he moves his bishop out of the way. Because he's a bishop man. Hmm, okay. So it'll be a... <clears throat> Take. He takes. I think he's just taking, isn't it? What fancy? Has he got anything fancy? Knight takes the pawn. Queen comes across. And attacks the knight. Because our queen doesn't have any protection. And I don't like it. I bet it's so simple as well. But I just think this player plays very oddly. And I feel like I'm just get falling into a trap. This rook doesn't have any defense on, so we could take with the queen. 
and see if we get the rook off the board but that allows them then to triple up here and plus they don't even need to triple up there they can just take the rook off the board because if we take then the queen takes so that causes trouble so definitely not going with the queen bring the knight attacking the rook and the bishop if the queen moves here doing something funky because it's x-raying through to the queen there's no checks on the we can take the rook off the board and the queen takes the knight but that's not going to happen is it okay so i don't think we need to worry too much i think we're locking this pawn in this knight capturing We'll lock it in and um, if this one comes back and um, dead quickly um i will play this one just to see what happens because this player is kind of strong it's one of those where i says well I'll potentially resign him because um the way they're playing and we've got two games against them so we shall see oh they've decided to push this one let's I was a bit worried about this game. What we got? So plus one there. Grabbed. Grabbed. Yeah, I was always thinking, oh, they're going to push, push, push. But I think I worked out that we might be fast enough to deal with that. So we're looking at maybe the knight coming here, attacking the queen. And then maybe even just blocking it off. So that's plus two at the moment. So that's what I was looking at. We made sure, well, we're trying to make sure that we're defending this pawn. Getting this knight here and I'm taking. Obviously, this rook is going to be looking to support. So this is where the knight could come in and block. So going to bring the knight up, the queen is still defending and if they do push the pawn down then we can bring the queen here and attack the queen. Something like that. And I'm not doing this one speedily, this one I remember um, quite clearly because of this pawn here. I thought oh, they got that funny position whereby when they push it down the rooks and the queens can't actually stop it. And then, as I said, no, the knight can come here and go here if need be. But now I'm looking, don't want them winning tempos by pressing here and we lose the rook. But we can go here. If he goes here, we can just take. If we take, his queen can come round, but it's not an exact target on our king. So let's go with that. We're locking in the knight. Oh, did I? I didn't mark off the last one, did I? Got carried away. So that's nine. So it's eight now. Eight now. So we passed the hour mark. Said it was probably going to end up being like half an hour. Uh, this is the guy who is, well, in my head, um, strong. They've actually, this is the second game that we're playing against them. So they've actually taken the rook. I didn't think they would. I, I'd done so many calculations on um, them pushing pawns and moving this knight and all that sort of stuff. I didn't think that they would um, take. And I did cover that as well. I'm um, like thinking, well, okay, they, they're probably, I think they're a pawn up or two pawns up or something. Oh no, it's us. We're plus one now. Okay, but I'm sure did they get it back in whatever I saw. Yeah, so we're plus one now from taking there but is our knight in a favorable position we're taking the rook anyway we'll lock that in and we'll take a look at it at another day so yeah every time i do that one i forget to mark it off seven so seven more to go so okay so in fit 13 up here if i dare do a refresh see how see when it goes to yeah, obviously it's showing nine because somebody else is, you know, they're, they're responding. We're sticking with seven. 
and that's where we've got to. And this is another game where potentially it's a draw with the bishops of opposite colour. Now, very delicate, these this one for me anyway. I think I mentioned it in yesterday's game, you know, yesterday's as well. These are very delicate. You can you can gain an advantage of getting the draw quite nicely if you play it, you know, nicely. But one tiny move wrong and it can all just fall apart. Yeah, so he's locked himself in with the bishop like we mentioned yesterday. He's also attacking this pawn. So we do have elements of attacking here. X-ray through to the rook. Sometimes they can forget themselves, but I don't think they will do. So I think pushing this... I've got so many pawns to deal with though. You know, it's like I have to babysit all these pawns, which is not really boarding well for the situation so we push and then he just pushes but we can take push and he takes and we take but then I'm just babysitting this pawn forever and a day yes could bring the bishop here I think I was thinking that it's just that this pawn can come down with the support of the rook I was thinking of just leaving it in the center here like this, like they're doing with their bishop, just locking it in. But the only problem is, like I've just mentioned, is maybe not that rook. Or some sort of rook supporting this pawn, hitting the bishop. And then it's not going to be there for long. Bishop does have a nice diagonal kind of blocking here. So my brain is thinking, well, we do have a bit of a pawn majority on this side. Um, they're all on dark squares, he's got a dark square bishop. Maybe we should start inching these up and making space around the king. So I'm going to do this, I mean he wasn't going to be pushing this pawn anyway, unless of course he did this and then he did this. So we'll go here first with the bishop. Then I'm also thinking, well the Rook's going to be coming down at some point, maybe looking to come here. Maybe getting a two on one on this pawn, but this pawn is blocking at the minute. But we're not really looking at keeping this pawn here. But once we move that, then the rook can come down quite easily to put two on ones on this situation. And what can we do? I'm locking in this bishop first. That's what we can do. Let's mark it off. Six. So that last game whew, looks a little bit stronger for white. I well for yeah, was it white? Yeah, for the other team. And we're plus two here. And again, another delicate one where really it could end up still being a draw, even though we're plus two in this situation. So the kings come down, we're pushed up, we're thinking, okay. You might as well have that pawn because really we're kind of struggling with position they've got a nice position with their knights if they utilize it well and they've hit our knight so we move the knight around they move their knight so it's probably looking to attack the pawn here or supporting this pawn so in any event i'm thinking well the knight is there now so we might as well start pushing and maybe pushing they might block off here so what do we do shall we start pushing this one first if they push here then we can't really get there so we're gonna have to push this pawn but the problem we've got is when we start pushing this pawn this knight comes here puts a check on the king so we have to move the king out of the way he's then got this pawn so there's a whole heap of stuff that they've got going for them so we could push this pawn just to say well okay we're going in the mix but he still takes the pawn and he's getting another pawn as well but is it going to be worth it I mean we've got here we're still going to have a few more pawns than them Ooh, tricky situation king could come here defending the pawn 
they do have pawn pushing down. But I don't think they'll push the pawn just yet. I think they'll probably bring the king down. So in any event, the knight is going to get squished and we've got nothing to actually take the pawn off the board. It's just going to inch, inch, inch. Go here blocking. King comes down. No, in fact, I don't even have to do that. So go there and block. Oh no, it does because the, our king can take it back, but would then lose the pawns here anyway. Yeah, so if we went up like this, king comes down to support the pawn. One of the key things for me is I'm thinking, well, maybe we just get rid of the, the knight. You know, maybe we just take this pawn off the board and deal with these pawns separately. So if we take, then obviously the knight is going to take. Yeah, so the knight is out of the way over on this side of the board. We push the pawn up. King goes, oh, I better go and sort that one out. And we just keep pushing. And then they take. And then their knight is kind of going to be taken. I don't think they'll do that, though. I think they'll move the knight, won't they? Yep. So we take. Knight takes. We push the pawn. Obviously, the knight is moving, and can it take a pawn while it's moving? No, it'll just move back here. Hold on, can't remember where it was. We take, they take, we push. He comes back. Yeah, so then we can't push any further. Then we go here with the king protecting the pawn. Mm. Not sure. I definitely feel like we're going to have to take this, Paul. Because we can't do anything really about this situation. Goes there. King comes down. If we pushed, say, king is close enough to protect the pawn. The pawn just pushes onto the knight. King's behind the pawn. Yeah, we, we can't do anything. So I think we're going to have to take the pawn and see if we can use the pawn majority against their king and maybe we'll scrabble a draw. That's the only thing I can think. But they might be really good with the knight, man. There's nothing else that we can do. We're just going to end up losing the pawns right in front of our face. Can't push that. We can't do that. Even when he pushed here, he still just goes here with a check on the king. So the king's going to have to move. And he's getting this pawn. So no matter how you slice it, that knight is just whipping everything off the board. Going to take. Let's lock it in. Very strong player. Another very strong player where you'd think, well, oh, let's resign. But all I want to do on that one is just practice that sort of ending, um, giving up the night and seeing if the poor majority can at least scrub some type of draw. It might not happen, but you know, you're gonna, I'm going to end up in situations like that where I have to make that crucial decision. Okay, this one here is the one where we're looking to potentially get the queen off the board, but I don't think the tempo is going to work in that sense. And they've just taken the pawn, which has attacked the bishop. And they're also attacking our bishop as well. So it's like loads of damage being done. He does have a check on our king, so we have to respond to that. So we're going to capture and we'll just see how, how, it, how, how it ends up. Oh, did I? I didn't mark down. So five, so we're on number four. Hour 15. That's a good innings. 
let's have a look so the knight comes up and attacks the oh, we might have done this one haven't we? but that's okay we're, we're just doing four more rooks there we attack the rook so we're trying to win some sort of tempe because there's pressure coming on here could always just go back and attack the rook again but what did we see um, we had visions of coming and attacking the pawn Z, because we're attacking this one and attacking this one so I think we're still going to continue with that because their idea is they're going to be taking here and then we can take it back so I don't think that's much of an issue so I'm going to just bring the knight across here that's what we covered in the because we've already just done this one today yeah excellent let's lock that in don't need to give that too much thought because we spent a lot of time over that one already and let's have a look at this and uh, that looks pretty simple i will be taking back with the bishop pretty straightforward there's no meaty attacks anywhere yeah so they're just taken keeping it simple let's just bring the bishop here let's lock that one in yeah i'm locking that in it looks pretty straightforward they've attacked we can attack um we're going to be on their knight again looking to potentially double their pawns if need be and we, then we can go and get castle no major threats here at all so pretty pretty straightforward yeah there's no secret missions coming from any of their pieces our king's going to be pretty safe so this is why we're locking that in let's just take here so it's not me moving super speedy it's just knowing i've seen this already and basically if they did x y and z i'd be able to do that straight off no problems there at all got the nice pawn elevated here to stop this pawn from coming in no issues let's go here let's lock that one in so that's three more to go bum, 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 bum. what does this one have for us oh night a night move attacking the rook yeah, so we moved our knight attacking their pawn, knowing this is going to be taken. Giving space to come and attack here. Attack the bishop. Bishop then attacks the rook. Then we come across, we can attack the knight. But I think we refrain from actually do, doing that because this knight is still there. so we wouldn't be able to come here so knight takes which it has done hasn't it yep the knight takes still got the sights on the pawn here at the minute knight takes rook takes Nice little bishop going here, but the knight is there. Hmm. What was the thinking? It's obviously attacking the pawn here. It's left this pawn for... What's the deal? For it to come back? What was the message? I mean that looks nice there so i'm feeling that that's okay but the bishop can just move here I'm sure that would have been covered off it does have this attacking the knight trying to get the rook to here to put some pressure around here but that might be a bit delayed I think it went something like that so anyway let's just let's get the rook up mindful bishops hunting this pawn let's just get the rook up lock it in so that's two 
there's always games where even if I've done calculation and I'm still looking at it and I'm umming and ahhing, it might be that that position um, is a little bit dodgy. I've got myself in a bit of a bad state anyway, um, and there's no real way out. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to avoid doing the swindling. But you know, if I don't, if you don't understand swindling, then really you can't use it in your armory if you've in if you're in a bad position or the position doesn't look favorable for you if you don't know about swindling then you can't use it so but it's a tool that i like to use you know the opponent might look like they're winning but if they're not covering off every blind spot that they've got then there's a glimmer of hope that you can actually take advantage of that right okay yeah we've done this one again this person's online definitely with the green light so we moved the queen up, didn't we? Yeah, move the queen to here. And they've come through attacking the knight, wanting to disrupt the potential for any attacks around their king area. We did say we could potentially move the knight here. Still got defense, but this pawn can come here. Uh, we can jump here. Bishop takes, pawn takes. And it's opening up this pawn a little bit. But we do have many pieces on there. So we don't need to sit and let them take the pawn because it doubles the pawns, doesn't it? And this is where we said, well, the dark square bishop needs to be doing something because the white square bishop is in its way. I think bringing the knight across here is going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. Yep. Let's do that, get it out of the way, then this small, this pawn can hit the bishop if need be. And I think we were very mindful as well that, you know, if we take with this pawn, the queen or the bishop are looking to get that diagonal on. So maybe we have to be very mindful and just move the queen. Yeah. King, sorry. So let's go. We'll lock in the knight move. And one more to go. And then we're done. What a session. 1 minute 22, so no pressure on the time. But then we said about an hour and a half, didn't we, probably? What have we got here? Is this one we've done today? Oh, it is one we've done today. Yeah, we went with the bishop attacking. Yeah, so we're looking for basically the queen exchange. I don't really want to get too arty. Unless, of course, arty works. You know, if we take the... Bishop with the rook. Where's the queen going? It's got many places it can go. It can go here. It can go here. It can go here. It can go here with a check on the king. No, it can't. What am I on about? The rook will just take it off the board. Scratch that one. Yes, yeah, so I can go there, go there, go there, there. But what's the advantage of my queen still being in this trap yourself state? <laughs> it's no real advantage I don't think because there's I don't know I think we'll go with the exchange go with the exchange rooks up rooks don't have any place in the center of the board so we'll quickly bring that back depending on the situation doesn't look like there's too much pressure they're going to be put on it so we'll probably be able to get the bishop here attacking the knight Trying to make it do something it doesn't want to do. Because they're not castled at the moment. Yep, let's do that. You know, something's telling me that just taking with the rook, get, keeping some sort of pressure towards the king, but it's not really because they're just going to go running and then somehow maybe they get my queen. Although I can't see it just yet now. Hmm. Take. Can go here. Can go here. Can go here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so whichever one they go with. So if it went here, Rook could come back and attack the Queen. And then they go backwards and forwards, get a draw. It would be nice to sit it there, but the Knight is there. And plus we don't have any support, just push this and get support. But the Knight is there anyway. Hmm, this would be interesting. Let's have a look. So, Rook goes here. Wherever the Queen goes. Up or down or here. Or here. I don't think they'll go there though. Or there. And the Knight can jump in here. Although, again, it's not meaty because <laughs> everything seems to be blocked off. Can't squeeze in there with the queen or anything like that. Oh, there's got to be something. It feels like I've got something rather than going for the queen exchange. No, not yet. We have to take the bishop. Take the bishop. Take the bishop. What is this knight? I'm scared of the knight, but I don't think I need to be. I don't think there's anything. No, I don't think there's anything. Maybe they just go and castle. No, they're not going to go castle just yet. Huh? Gonna take with the rook, you know. I think there's something we ha we have active pieces that want to get in somehow. Like bishop, maybe taking the knight off the ball, getting the knight up here. It looks good, but this it's not <laughs> it's not clear. But I think I'd rather I think I'd rather take that chance. If it was over the board, I think I would go for it because it just looks too much for the opponent. It looks like we're jamming them in. But if they've got any sense, they'll realise, well, they ain't got much. Okay, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's lock it in. Interesting game, that one. And that's the last one. Hour 27. Excellent.